Yes. Hello. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Red Pill Horror Core Radio Show. We're doing a video cast today because, uh, well, special occasion here, and it's a pre-record, so why not? Uh, we are definitely kicking butt. We're piling in with these shows. We're going to be doing this a lot more often. Kind of miss doing the video stuff uh, since uh, the TV version of the show hasn't been done for quite a while. But, you know, that will happen again eventually. We're just waiting on getting video streaming capabilities on TLBTalk.com. Which, if you guys want to contribute and be a part of the building of this Truth Media, uh, you can definitely go to TLBTalk.com, which are sponsors, go there, create a profile, and make some donations. You know, it doesn't have to be a lot. Cost of a cup of coffee, five bucks a month, hey, why not? You know, freedom of speech, 100%. Uh, you know, of course, don't be a total... Uh, you know, Nazi hate mongering racist person, but you know, other than that, I think you know, Americans can be very responsible for free speech, and that's what we're all about. That's what this show is all about. And uh, yes, I've got my co host here with me, my co pilot, because <laughs> he's more than capable of flying the ship <laughs> uh, as anybody else. Uh, I've got Luca Mino here with me. How you doing? And terrifying okay. to fly the airplane, but we're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All of a sudden, exactly. you're on the air on V's show, or it, it's a show V and I do together, and all of a sudden, he disappears. He got bumped off, and I had to keep going by myself, and it was like, oh, Okay, you're at the controls, dude. I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A good, a good three minutes, you know, and then you came back on. That was funny. It was like, wow. Okay. <sighs> yeah. Being a target individual, you know, it's being hacked. <laughs> Especially when you say it's something they don't want you to say. Uh, feds are off the charts. But anyhow, we've got our special guest here with us. We have Mark Williams. How are you doing, brother? I'm um, I'm okay, thank you. I'm good. I'm good generally. Yeah. The um, obviously it's not an ideal situation um, being a TI, but you know it's uh, you know you just get on with it, don't you? So yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, yes, are any... you are in fact the target individual. I was told that. Uh, before before we go into that, uh, let's know who you are. You know your past, where you, where you come from, what what do you do today? Mm. Well, basically, um, I've been targeted from what I'm aware of for about 15 years. Um, and today I'm actually a therapist. I do life coaching. Um, but um, I've also done well. I've also done Reiki healing and mindfulness before that as a therapist. Um, I work with clients all around the world uh, and I also own something called Targeted UK, which is a website in the UK, which is the biggest website for targeted individuals. Mm. So I took over that in um, December time, and I've been running some some campaigns on that. I've also uh, worked with um, a lot with in schools as well um, over the years. And um, this happened to me when I was in Thailand about 15 years ago. Um, although actually looking back, it seems as though it may have been going on before that because I started to link the dots, um, to, you know, I start to understand the situation better in the present moment. And then I start to look back and, and link many things which may have been occurring back 
you know, even going back into teenage years and childhood potentially, because there were some things which which didn't feel right. And that knowing the symptomology of this, knowing, you know, how they do this, um, you know, I kind of I was putting two together and thinking that felt like this symptom I'm having now, you know, this pattern that I'm having now. So it's really been kind of a whole journey of discovery on that level where I've been uh, really putting the pieces together and um, realizing that this may have maybe more than just even a remote uh, weapons assault. It may be more, you know, more like an MK Ultra kind of one where they put you on at a younger age, you know. So, yeah, it's um, it's it's been kind of um, quite hard to really to remember that far back as well. You know, you kind of just get a sense of it, a kind of intuition, a feeling of it. And, and then um, because it was so long ago, you, you know, you just sometimes you just you can't really join all the dots you just you just get a kind of intuition of it a feeling of it and and, and that helps you you know because so long ago so you're absolutely right uh wow <laughs> 15 years uh yeah it's been about uh eight eight years for myself so it, it's definitely one of those life-changing things mm. uh so the symptoms i want to uh go into that uh and, and you know we have this thing in common where you know we sort of counsel other ti's i'm glad there's, it's not just me out there um it's really it's a traumatic thing but once you get a grasp of it and and you you get that grip uh it's really, it is a blessing. It, it is. And to be able to help others is, is a wonderful thing. So I want to go on your self-discovery about how you picked up the pieces. Um, well, for me, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a very straightforward path because what happened was um, I all of a sudden I started feeling this like incredible anxiety and um, I basically um, started getting panic attacks and even back then I was thinking this feels very superficial like why is this coming out of nowhere and something didn't feel right basically I um, I went away and um, I started getting all of this anxiety and these I started getting these panic attacks all of a sudden and it felt really artificial it felt quite superficial and i was like this is just seemed wrong like you know i don't know why this is happening to me Like, i didn't know whether somebody had slipped something in my drink or something or like whether i was at first i felt like i was going crazy um and it was only really years later that i kind of i, I pieced it all together because um I ended up going home early. I had this big trip around the world. My father just passed away. You know, I've got a little bit of money for my inheritance. And I was just kind of in, in that phase of, you know, blow it. I'm young, I'm 24. I'm just going to kind of go around the world, you know, and see the world. So, um, you know, I, um, I'm i traveling around the world and um, I get to Thailand. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm on the bus. I remember being on the bus and all of a sudden just like freaking out and thinking, God, like, you know, and, you know, when it originally first happened, it felt as though, like, I could do something, like, really stupid. So I, I just knew, I said, I knew that's not me. That's not me. You know, I, I know this is not me. I know something. But at the time, you know, I just thought I was going through some kind of, like, anxiety or panic thing. I, I didn't, that was the only thing I could um, ascribe it to at that time. And uh, I ended up coming back home early, um, which was a shame. Um, sort of travel around to Australia and um, you know had a little bit of a family hold over my mother came out and um, um, in going back home and I tried to um, heal myself you know kind of thinking that it must be something you know that needs healing you know that I was I was kind of a little bit into energy healing back then um, you know started really running um, looking after my health thinking you know this is you know I can heal myself whatever it is can heal myself so but I just kept doing that and doing that and doing that and even though I was kind of like feeling better it wasn't all going away it wasn't like completely healing me from it so 
this was kind of a little bit confusing and this kind of confused me a lot over the years is like you know i know that i can heal anything i know that whatever it is i can heal it but why am i not getting to the root of this like what's really going on and then um what happened was around 2011 i started getting into spirituality it was, it was actually a bit before that. it was more like 2009 but in 2011 i met someone who um pointed me towards a website called energetic synthesis which talks about ascension and um and she started talking to me about mind control and um and then i started i, I as soon as she said it i was like i know that's going on with me i know that's what it is but i was understanding it you could say from more of a spiritual perspective i wasn't really kind of understanding it as much from a real world perspective in terms of who was necessarily doing it or why they were doing it i didn't know at that point really how widespread it was so that kind of i kind of had that kind of background understanding of it for maybe about um till about 2017 and then in 2017 I was like, at this point, I honestly thought that I was possessed. I thought that I had some kind of like spirit attachment. And I just thought, right, that's it. I'm going to stop working and I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to do whatever, whatever I need to do to deal with this before I start working again. It got to that point where I was just like, I've had it. I've got to like sort this, whatever it is. So I took some time off work and, um, you know, I was like praying praying for the answers and, and kind of like putting it out there, attracting the answers and the solutions. And um, eventually, you know, the, the weird thing was I got this kind of like message or like to look online, search for transhumanism. And when I did that, I came across this really helpful um, website um, by this guy. What was his name? Um, Parker what was ah, Philip Philip Walker. Yeah, Philip Walken, he had all this material where he was um, talking about the mind control symptoms. And when I was reading it, it was like, you know, when you just read something and it's like everything is starting to make sense. I was getting like, you know, this, 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 um, you know, I, I'll admit at the time it was it was quite shocking because I was reading all of this stuff and I was literally everything he was saying was me. And then um, I find out, started finding out more about who was doing it, that a lot of it was like intelligence and military related. And that's really when I kind of first grounded the information, you know, that this was more of a, um, you know, kind of real world thing, like a technological thing, you know, that was being done. You know, it wasn't like a spiritual thing that was like, you know, or, or, I mean, obviously I believe in the spiritual side of things as well, you know, and, and all that level. but for me it felt very much more like a real world thing you know that it was more like military intelligence and the program was global i didn't know how many people were affected so that really kind of grounded my understanding and that's really when i kind of came to the awareness that there was all this community you know called the ti community um and i just made a decision i said right what am i going to do about this you know am i going to you know try and my absolute best and just fight this you know tooth and nail to the end or am I just going to kind of just kind of get back on with things? And I was like, no, there's no way I'm doing that. So I made a commitment to myself to to um, to join the, the the community and to put myself out there and start to get to know a few people. And then just really expanded from there. I did a lot of research into it and start to make some friends, make some connections. In 2018, I did a protest with another guy who used to be one of the owners of the website that I own now. And it was really successful. We had about 60 people turn up, which was, I think at that time, possibly the biggest targeted individual protest that's ever been, or at least one of, I think I saw one that was probably around the same time. But um, I wrote a free ebook, which I shared with other TIs about all the different, um, you know, the what, the how, the why of the targeted individual program, all the details. <laughs> Hold on, were, were you there with my man Pialo? Oh, Paolo, yeah, I know Paolo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a good guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I was. Yeah, I've met Paolo three times now, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, he's, he was the he's, vice he's, president he's... at some point in that organization. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 one of the uh original guys, you know, he's been around for ages and 
you know what I really admire about Paolo is, is how he, he's, he's gone out and he's protested. He's, I think he used to protest every single night. So, you know, a lot of respect for that. So, um, he's a great inspiration. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. He's been on the show a couple of times. And, okay. Uh, right. Yeah. He, he's, he's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I wrote a free book, uh, and then, um, yeah. And then I started, um, basically I was, you know, asking a lot of questions, um, about what the best way to go forward with this was. So, I came up with a campaign which is called the International Mail Merge Campaign or the International Email Campaign, which basically I, um, on spreadsheets, I find all the main people across the world, like across the human rights groups, across, um, you know, like the EU, across the UK Parliament, the politicians, um, a lot of like um, intelligence agencies, weapons providers like Lockheed Martin. I found out um, the police, all the police departments in the UK, a lot, of, a lot of the media contacts in the US, UK, worldwide. And I just put together a lot of contacts. Um, and then I would send these out, you know, as, as regularly as I could to alert people about this, you know, and um, really get the world out, uh, really get the message out to the, to the people I viewed as being the most important who could actually help us. So I'm still doing that. Um, but, um, I did that um, very um, strongly for about the first year and a half. I'm going to be getting back to doing that again, but I've been incredibly busy trying to get this website up and running. Um, so I've got lots of, with the new website, I took over that in December and a lot of the campaigns, one of the campaigns is related to that um, email campaign where I'm trying to get people to visit their MP so that it's making it real for the actual, you know, obviously if you get an email, I mean, that's good in terms of it's planting the seed and it's spreading awareness, but really you need people to make that real and personal to someone, say, for example, a politician. So I'm really encouraging people to visit the politician to kind of back that email campaign up. Um, I've also got a few other campaigns. Um, I've got nine in total, but seven main ones that I'm doing. Um, one of them actually is called the prayer campaign, and this is the main one that I'm trying to promote across the world, across the entire targeted image of community, where um, this actually could be called the law of attraction campaign as well. I've also used that phrase. And the idea behind the prayer campaign is that in the TI community, we have um, often tried and tried and tried to take action over and over again. And it seems like we've hit up against the brick wall. You're like, nothing seems to be happening. You know, no one is really listening to us much, you know, and just when we think we're getting somewhere, it seems as though, oh, no, that kind of opportunity has gone now. Or just when someone starts a lawsuit or some legal proceedings, then all of a sudden it's like oh, that kind of faded away. And I was noticing a lot of this and, um, you know, even myself when I was doing things, you know, um, you know, I was doing using a lot of the law of attraction, you know, my mind to manifest the things as well as I could. And I was getting results, you know, I was making progress and I could feel everything like opportunities coming to me. But I just realized that like this is the key. I had this real sort of like epiphany moment where it's just like we need to get the whole community praying on mass. We need like an army of prayers. We need like an army of people, TIs and the public who actually know about the law of attraction know about their ability to manifest as you know as creators co-creators on this planet um so that was my goal so basically i've one of my campaigns is simply to get people to understand about the law of attraction that's called the learn the law of attraction campaign and the other one is the prayer campaign and these two really go together because if people understand about how to attract and manifest we can really empower the community and then they're more likely yes. to join the prayer campaign knowing that it's not they don't have to view the word prayer as anything religious or spiritual or have any preconception about that phrase which might put them off prayer is simply you know when we think in every moment that's a prayer you know we're putting things out there which are going to manifest our reality you know and whether we call it the law of attraction whether we call it prayer whether we call it programming our unconscious mind you know where someone who's a therapist might talk about in them terms or whether we talk about it as energy and cause and effect, 
you know, you know, as a physicist might talk about it in them terms, um, or transference of energy, whatever we talk about, whatever way we we look at it is is fine, you know, we, we just, and that's the main thing that I'm trying to do is is try to educate the target individual community that, um, you know, we're using this power of manifestation anyway through our thoughts, so we may as well become aware of it. And in whatever way that we view it, there's many ways to view it, and whatever way we view it is fine. But please, I'm, I'm trying to put it out there, please don't let any preconceived notion of a phrase or an idea put you off from using something that's going to work. Well, so, I tell you what, um, <laughs> a, a, a mass of people praying might clog up the remote neural monitoring. <laughs> It'd be a lot of useless information for the for the AI. <laughs> I heard it plugs up. <laughs> well, let's see. You know, you you have some very valid experience, and Luca, um, and I don't I don't talk about this much, but yeah, uh, the whole panic attack thing. Like I'm one. I'm a person that you know fear was quickly removed out of me like by my father i went through some very hardcore psychological training i guess pain and fear with my father as a very small child fear is not something that's a part of my mental construct so but i still i kept getting these hardcore hits you know sensations of you know like what the hell's going on here and you know feeling like my my chest was collapsing in on itself you know just just not being able to breathe just you know like that sort of thing yeah. and then i i read about you know and i did a lot of scientific research behind the stuff you know there are simple frequencies that can do amazing things especially the human body and there's a frequency you can get hit by which basically does that collapses your magnetic field and you start feeling like the whole world is caving in on you and that does induce panic attacks as something that they use things like this to get people on you know the pharmacopias get you know get people on the drugs mm. oh you're you're you know you have this condition you're you know you're having panic attacks you're gonna need these drugs and it's, it's really a proponent of all that so that's something I didn't get to talk about much in my documentaries, I don't think. But uh, I, I, I've seen a lot of, and, and Luca, you haven't been a part of the TI community uh, very much, but I, I want to also touch on the fact that with these target individual groups, you know, I've been trying to help them and help them as much as possible. But you have so many of these personalities and, you know, every, this personality ha has to be right or that personality has to be right. Yeah. And if you don't agree with, the, if me, with me or if you don't agree with that person, you're a perp. And then it always explodes on itself. Yeah. So we need ways to get people to, to, to be able to connect and be a group with each other. And I would like to know, you know, as, as someone who hasn't been targeted, like, like us, uh, what would you think would be a solution? Um, that's um, that's a very good question. Um, and, and Luke, maybe, can chime in on that too, please. Oh, well, sorry. May, may, maybe I can chime in and and give give uh, our, our our guest uh, some ammunition, if you'd like. Um, I'm sitting here, and I quote unquote have not been targeted. Okay, but I'm feeling really at home. Because I'm sitting here writing down words like panic attacks, bits and pieces, anxiety, uh, breathing difficulties, abuse, dysfunctional. That's more like where I come from. Uh, that's not me. Uh, panic attacks. And then you talk about intuition, about how, how you learn how to listen to it. And then you talk about spirituality. And then you talk about how spirit gives you little signs something drops in your lap one day oh why don't you look at this you know that's because you're listening you're not fighting uh but for me i've come from such a dysfunctional family that dysfunction abuse it, it, it all chimes in with, with, with the same type of uh, symptoms as you you guys are describing 
it's amazing. I'm sitting here looking at all that. And I'm going, yeah, yeah, I had that. Yeah, been there. Yeah, you know, because of my dysfunctionality, my sister said that when, one time, she never told me this before, very quickly. She said one time I came home uh, during the summer months from university in, in, the, in the States, and we were living in Geneva, Switzerland at the time. And she said that she came over to, to visit the family for uh, about a month or so. And she, the only thing she remembers of that is me sitting next to my mother at, at dinner. And every time my mother would move, I would flinch. That's how bad the abuse was. My mother would move, I would flinch, thinking something was, you know, was, was going to happen. She said, that's all I remember. And I can't remember about 80 to 90 percent of my childhood because of the severe trauma that your 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 mind just cuts off. So this this is probably really good for me too. You know, this is a way to come back home and to to deal with the skeletons in the closet, like they say. Mm. Yeah, no, sorry to hear that. It's um, it's terrible. Well, it's terrible what ha what happened to you people, and it's it's you know it it is. I am part of the community, I guess, because of the abuse that, that I've suffered, and we don't talk about that stuff because nobody wants to hear about it, and it's not a popular subject. Well. Guess what? <laughs> mm. No. Yeah. Yeah, I think that you, you, we always have to find some way to communicate it out. Otherwise, it just bottles up even more. And to, to heal, you know, that's what we're all doing as, as TIs and, and, and you know, people that have just received trauma. We're always trying to heal. And, um, you know, I think um, from my perspective, you know, one of the things that I found was that I was healing things and then I was just being re-traumatized through the technology. And I think by this point, you know, it's got to the point where um, I don't know what it, how it happened for you, V, but for me, I received so much um, attacks and trauma over the last 15 years that it got to the point where the fear started to dissipate. And I don't really feel it that much anymore. Like it's maybe it's, you know, 20 percent, 25 percent, whereas before it was like, you know, 100 percent. 110 percent you know it was severe you know um you know i was i was afraid for my life you know and, and on many occasions and and you know i thought i was losing my soul you know they would always like do this really think do this program because it can always the the, the rnm the remote neural monitoring it kind of knows your fears you know it's able to kind of see what your fears are and attach onto certain thoughts and emotions and then kind of take you further down that narrative and maybe it's because I was exploring the soul and kind of understanding more about that. But they always used to feed me this narrative where, you know, I was terrified that I was losing my soul and that, and it was, it was like, it was fear on steroids. And then, you know, it kind of got to the point where maybe I just got so much desensitized to it. But it was also when I started understanding about it and I started to learn well, about the weapons. Well, okay, well, just to clarify, when you say feeding, being fed the message, were you receiving the synthetic telepathy? The voice of the skull? Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it, back, back in the day, I didn't really, um, I'd experienced it at certain times where I'd kind of like noticed it, but I'm not sure whether it was happening all the time back then, because looking back, I don't remember that being one of the symptoms. Um, so maybe that came later on where they really started doing that a lot more. But I do remember at various times, especially in the early part of my targeting, where I did hear the V2K. Um, but I think that um, I started to really get a lot more perceptive when I learned a lot of the symptoms. And when I, um, when I learned them, I was able to kind of put two and two together. Oh, that's why that's happening. I can feel that happening now. I understand why that's happening. And that demystified a lot of the fear for me because when I originally came across all this material in 2017, I, I, there was a lot of fear. And then, you know, um, after a while, you know, after like a year, two years, it really just kind of dissipated a lot and went down to like a, you know, really quite a manageable level. Um, but it's, um, you know, it's more kind of like the other symptoms in terms of like making me like, you know, a lot of it was like they try and make you very fatigued a lot of the time and kind of they're always like firing the frequency weapons at you and trying to send you to sleep and uh, and all of these things. So, you know, there's been a lot of other things that I've, I've had to battle. And it's like once you kind of get to grips with one thing, it's like the technology is very intelligent and kind of will know the next line of attack to go in. 
it's like when I just feel like I'm really getting on top of my health and I'm doing really well with that, you know, um, it'll start to attack that again. And then I'll have to like redeal with that whilst I'm dealing with, you know, having to try and live and make money at the same time and, and, and do all these other things. And it's like, you know, it's like trying to micromanage your life. Whereas, if, you know, if you weren't targeted, it'd be a case of just thinking, right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to work hard at that. I'm going to manage that. Whereas in this case, it's like I have to constantly micromanage my experience sometimes just to get done what I need to do and kind of put the work in on the website and run these campaigns and, you know, try and keep fit as well. Because they're always trying to get me to eat and, and, and kind of and, and do things that are not going to be good for my health, you know. And um, so that's just a few things that, uh, you know, TIs deal with, not just me. That's low. They're very common, what I've just mentioned. Oh, yeah. A lot of times just keeping busy is the best part of it. You know, they say idle hands is the devil's workshop. And when you got the devil whispering directly into your ear, you know, that's why we have all these false flag shooters. This is why we have all the suicides. So, yeah, absolutely. I, I got a good one for you guys. How about they don't teach us about spirit? from a very young age they do not teach you about spirit about how to become a better person about how energies work you know so they can use it against us maybe you know because you can't fight an enemy if you don't know your enemy yeah well they they, they don't spirituality is not something that, that is being taught or, is to be used for strength but they definitely hold on to the superstitions because they want to control us with 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 the demons that they create you know as i was trying to figure it out for myself you know they came at me like that oh well we're we're angels we're we're aliens yeah. we're, 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 this is god speaking to you i'm like you know what wrong address <laughs> well you know what I had to dig down and find out it was the NSA doing this to me. Yeah. You guys might might not relate this being the same thing, but you know how they say the teacher tells the student he's stupid, he's going to end up believing it, right? Well, I always get, I used to get mad at myself and yell at myself and swear at myself. You stupid little, you know, you're, you know, of course you 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 you're not going to wind up to to be any good for anybody or you know, you keep hearing voices like that. Like that's what what my demon was. You know, I'd be yelling at myself if I dropped something, you know, I I curse at myself. Put myself down literally and one day it was like, you know "What? That's not me." Hello? Yeah. You know, no, that's not me. I don't do that. You know, I yeah. love my my myself. That's and ever since then when you're aware of it, your spirit can, you know, there's there's not much the uh, the negative energies can do when you're getting better and better at your craft and being a good person, I don't think. So that's where I'm at. Yeah, I think there's, um, you know, there's three levels, you know, the, 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 there's the inner voice that is can torment us simply because we're not aware of our minds and our minds are out of control. And then there is the spiritual level, spiritual attachments, you know, demonics. And th this is this is also vast, you know, and then there's the technological side of things. That's kind of the way that I view it. So it's kind of no, it's good to have an understanding of what's really affecting you first. And uh, maybe a bit of research, you know, if people are watching this and maybe um, thinking I'm going through some of these, these symptoms or I'm going through some of these problems, is just finding out, doing a bit of research about some of these topics and, and taking it from there. Um, yeah, I think that um, if people are really, people have to want to be honest though. If the people are going to change, they have to be honest with themselves because there's a lot of denial. Like, and what, what really struck me was that when I originally found out about this in 2017, when I started doing a lot of research, is that I started, you know, as, you know, talking to people around me, people I knew, and I was surprised that it seemed as though a lot of them had had very similar symptoms that could have only, in my view, had having been these you know, remote neural monitoring, mind control, due symptoms. And that was really shocking for me because, you know, I thought that, you know, these people were, um, you know, just into spirituality and, you know, they, they weren't like enemies of the state, you know, they weren't like political dissidents or people who were speaking out necessarily. And yet they seemed as though they had received some of these symptoms as well. And I think the interesting thing is that, you know, 
it seems as though there may be some people who receive it every now and again, um, but are not particularly, you know, a TI who's not like, you know, being put on the program. Um, and then because I came across a whistleblower recently and she was saying that, you know, it's all done via even picking up certain trigger words and, and you know, that everyone's being monitored, brains being monitored via something called Echelon and stochastic resonance where they were able to amplify the brain waves to send out this frequency, the NSA, via the Echelon system. And it amplifies people's brain waves, which then they can pick up more easily. Um, and then if you say anything like a trigger word, like maybe, like, I don't know, maybe the word like deep state or whatever, then all of a sudden that trigger word um, will hook them into the kind of like more that remote neural monitoring and then they might get like some attack but then it may kind of fade away if they stop talking about things that are politically hot or things that they don't want to know about. So I'm just kind of floating the idea out there because the, I have come across some kind of people who they definitely seem as though they've experienced some of these things. You know, they're not into the truth movement. You know, they're into kind of spirituality. They don't even really speak out to some of these people. Um, but yet it seems as though they're just targeting people simply on the basis that they're into spirituality, they're into some kind of personal growth or personal development. And yet these people are not going through anywhere near the same level of trauma um, that, for example, myself and perhaps V have experienced in terms of the, the, the daily grind, you know, where you know, because a lot of these people are still able to live their life in a um, unrestricted fashion. And, you know, like you say, you, you can, you know, still go about your day and do things and work, but things become a lot harder. You know, um, your potential, you know, you, you're not reaching your full potential. You know, you may be reaching only maybe what of, you know, 10% of it, you know, if that, you know, that's, that's the, you v, know. Help me out here. How, why am I thinking, why am I thinking Wi-Fi? It seems to me like there's something, there's a connection there somewhere with Wi-Fi, with, you know... Wi-Fi with... is part of the surveillance grid. You have uh, uh, 3D mapping. Uh, these things can potentially map the brain as well. Um, but I know it's mostly uh, a lot of cell tower satellite stuff. But uh, Wi-Fi... Oh, like, Mark, they... like Mark was saying. Like Mark was saying, like, you know, people that, that are getting targeted aren't necessarily people that are getting into. And then I thought Wi-Fi right away. It just. Ding. Well, it, it, as long as your atmosphere is flooded with frequencies, it, it makes it a lot easier to obfuscate uh, that you're being hit with a frequency yourself. So it would take some highly specialized equipment to even pick up. Because through the interferometry, you have constructive or deconstructive field. And the selected and intended target is the only person that's going to be able to pick up that that frequency. So um, that that's, you know, Wi-Fi, again, it, it often skates everything. And there is probably a subliminal factor to it as well. So um, it, it's part of the remote neuro monitoring to some degree. Mm. I do believe. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, I think food also, food also has a lot to do with it. What we're eating, eating out of a box, GMOs, you know, plastic. Well, it, it, it's, it's the individual's behavior. Yeah. What, what it is, is, is the, it's the individual. How do they fit into the scheme of society and what's going on? And if they don't fit, then they get hooked up to the synthetic telepathy. The, the B2K, the voice of the skull. Um, for, for, mm -hmm. for example, with myself, you know, after getting out of the military, you know, they realized how smart I was. They tried getting me to change my MOS from 63rd Bravo to doing intelligence. I was like, no, you guys, no, I, I don't want to do that. So, but thank God I ended up getting the medical discharge. And but it, they're like, you know, we want you to come back and work for us. We want you to come back and work for the government. You're a genius. You're a genius. You don't think like everybody else. We want you to come back. And then, you know, it's just other things. Well, if, if you don't want to work for us, you better work for somebody. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's always <laughs> been something. Yeah, like, get a job. We want you to get a job. You know, I, I'm... I'm I own, I'm not on my business. I, I, I have a side hustle. No, we don't want you to do that. Because they want me in a position where I'm controlled. 
You're going to become a want... threat. Yeah. So if you Correct. work for the military, you know, there's a lot of people who've left the military and intelligence and they end up getting surveyed by a remote neural monitoring because they think they have information that they're going to spread out there and they don't want that information out there. Or, you know, there has been cases as well where people maybe have fallen out with someone in the military, they've left, and then it's been like a vengeance thing where they put people on. So this is this is very, very common what you're saying, you know, that when they leave the military. And just thinking about that, there's somewhere near me, I don't know whether you've heard of Menworth Hill. Have you heard of Menworth Hill? Can't say that I have. But we are going to have uh, Mike Weiss on the show. Uh, so, guys, catch that episode if, if this is hasn't been played yet previously. <laughs> uh, he's a, a former Inspector General of uh, Military Intelligence. So, uh, yes, he, so he's talking about these sort of things as well. Right. Yeah, no, sounds good. Um, so there's a base near me, an NSA base near me called Menworth Hill. And I live in Yorkshire in, in the UK. And it's the biggest electronic monitoring station in the world. And it's got all them big white ray domes, you know, it's in beautiful countryside. And we always used to drive past that place and think that place just looks, there's a real bad energy coming from it. And anyway, um, since doing my research into this, it seems as though that is a um, one of the main places in the UK where they're doing this targeting from. The information that I've come across, just to kind of give a summary, a lot of the targeted justice stuff seems very good, like they're talking about it coming from Shriver Air Force Base in the USA, in Colorado. Um, me personally, I think that is definitely the main hub because that's the main satellite operating station it's the main center of control for the nsa and the satellites mm -hmm. and uh, menworth hill is, is kind of like one of their you know um state bases on their hub you know there's there's about 25 points of them worldwide and um after listening to this whistleblower it seems as though what's happened is the usa has given this technology to other nato countries um, but USA is basically, you know, kind of at the helm of it, which is why I believe that if we stop it in the USA, then it, it they will, haven't will given trickle down effect. They haven't given the technology to, but they have their bases around the world, in which they're operating the stuff from. Um, yeah, there's a place in Australia, you know, NSA bases. Yeah, uh, so there is the idea that they have some sort of control that the other intelligence agencies cannot do. And that is why the American government is spreading all over the planet uh, because they're, they're, the actual success and the effect of that success of their intelligence it gives them the, the key to the world. Any nation, yeah. Any any operations that they do because they can read the minds of the enemies. Okay, they'll go bust this person, go bust that person, go arrest this person, go kill that person, and they are in control of all military conflicts because they have the supreme intelligence. People, that's that's something that people are probably never going to be able to fully understand, even after all this <laughs> goes yeah. away. Uh, but yeah, uh, in the United States, uh, you have fusion centers. Uh, Karen Stewart would, would say, you know, she would walk into one of these places and the targeting would stop when she went to complain to to these uh, these people. So I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, so interesting. I I I I I believe that what's happening is that. You know, like you say, that a lot of these American bases, they're spreading themselves around the world. And so this is why I think that if you stop it in, if you stop it in America, that I think this is the hub of the global system that it will have a big trickle down effect. And I think that what they're doing, I, I, I personally don't think my personal opinion, this is not all just coming from Shriver Air Force Base. I think this is coming from various US bases around the world. I mean, men were filled down the road. They're, I mean, most of that, the people that work there are US Air Force and, and American military people that work there. And only maybe, I think it's like 
and 15 percent is actual british military and intelligence so you can see here that it's basically a, a, a mil an american military base and there's a, a whistleblower called tivon um tivon rivers or something i think it's called and he talked about when he left Menworth Hill, which is 15 miles down the road from me, he said that all of a sudden he started receiving electronic harassment. And he found out somehow that there was a team of people up there doing this um, mm. to local civilians. But I've come across other research which is suggesting that it's that's the main centre of the hub for, you know, the UK. But then in America, it's probably Shriver and then like North America. But I, I would hazard a guess that what they're doing is they're using these these NSA bases around the world. I mean, I don't know how many they'd use. Maybe they'd have like five major ones, and then five major hubs would be where they would kind of orchestrate the, the mind control around their areas because they would use like Listen, the local satellites. <laughs> I'm here in Poland, and uh, just north of me, there's uh, NSA base in Dansk. So, I mean, yeah, they're <laughs> everywhere. Mm. Can I wow. can I uh, throw you guys something that you don't know from the Native American world? And this is something that I told V on one show, and you don't talk about this usually, but I'm allowed to talk about it because I'm a protected individual and also because it's important and it's relevant. Um, in the Native American world, you could take somebody's hair, just somebody's hair or an object that somebody had, like a pen or anything at all, and you could wish something you could throw a curse on the person from half the world away. Yeah. And I I know for a fact, because uh, I know how evil this system is, they, they learn from that. They watch the natives with long hair. Mm. While it's watching that, the natives in long hair, that, you know, that, telling them about dangers coming that's up. The, that's, because the long hair could... that's the black magic system that is part of the, uh, the deep state and the cabal. Call well, it what I, I, you I will. Don't use, I don't want to use the term black magic, but it's no. uh, called... Uh, Luca, <laughs> oh, so so this, 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 is, Luca. this is what the Native Americans had for for millennia. Okay, they, you know, good is just as bad. It, good is just as powerful as evil is. But okay, but Luca, let, but before you stray, let me let me hammer on Not, the point you just made. Let me just let me hammer on that. So the uh, synthetic telepathy, uh, and and the way they they use these longitudinal waves uh it's called scalar energy they say scalar waves and this is the synthetic telepathy stuff um they have found that they can increase or decrease a person's health with this frequency and, and a lot of it is based on intent you know like that observation thing yep so um there are some doctors, I'll, I'll just air quote doctors around the world who go around with the scalar wave uh, uh, machines uh, they've made in their labs or whatever, and they'll have, you know, they'll say, give me a picture of your relative, whoever's sick, you know, some, some, some personal items, and, and, and they'll use the scalar, scalar wave energy to heal their intended targets, their patients. Uh, right now, no one can debunk that's actually working or not working, but I've seen the test with the scalar wave energy for the fact that it cannot be blocked by any normal object or any singular uh, object or shielding uh, there, that, that can be found. There are people around here, and I know of one in particular, that can throw a curse on you and you'll walk in front of a pickup truck or you'll walk in front of a semi if that's what he wants. You know, it, it's energy can be as good as, as, or as bad as you, as you allow it. And it's, you know, it's a game to them. That, I really believe that. That stuff's real too, what you're yeah. talking about, Luke. That stuff's real too. Absolutely. Yeah. It's interesting, well, what you, v, it's interesting what you're saying because I've come mm -hmm. across these um, energy healing modalities that you're on about where they, they have like a little bullet, like a metal bullet, and they program the bullet when, and you put it on you in person. But they can also, you know, you can also do that via, you know, intention via something that is, is um, got their DNA or got their their signature on it. So it's um, they understand about these things on a very deep level, you know. It, uh, it, it is the manifestation of uh, it. See, 
this is, I don't want to be like a Bible thumper here, but, you know, it says that we are made in God's image. And something I take very seriously is when I put my energy and, and, and uh, observation onto something, into something, my energy level, whether it's good or bad, it, something usually good or bad happens to whatever is going on. Uh, I, I'm not one to curse people, but people have told me that I've created little little demons that would follow someone and give them hell. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I've, I've had shamans tell me that, that, that I, that's the way I, I handle business. But uh, Maybe it's karma <laughs> doing it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I say. I think it's karma yeah. because yeah. I know I'm, I'm going to do good towards people. The more I do good for, for others, the, the more I think I'm being protected in, yeah. in a way. Yeah. But well, we are else? able to manifest uh, our intentions if we know how to do it. So yeah. that's um, that's what we were saying before about the law of attraction, you know, saying that um, your thoughts create your reality. But actually, it's not just your thoughts. It's your thoughts, your emotions and your action. A lot of the mainstream um, law of attraction books just say it's about your thoughts in terms of, you, you know, it's only your thoughts manifesting your reality and you just have to think it. And this can sometimes make people lazy and just think they can sit at home and just pray and think things into existence. You know, we're not Jesus mm -hmm. yet. We're not that spiritually advanced where we can just, you know, manifest things like that. We have to manifest via thinking it, holding very powerful emotions or emotions of it already being done. And that's the quickest way of doing it. Faith and love are very powerful manifesting emotions. So if we in the community can learn to not just take action, but also build up the power of our actions before via prayer, via visualization, via affirmation, via um, holding these powerful uh, supportive emotions. That means we're using our mind and our emotions in the most powerful way to attract the most desirable actions, the most desirable opportunities to reach directly to the most powerful people who can help us. You know, that's one advantage of prayer. It goes straight to the source of help. You know, where sometimes... And then, the, and then the, the devil will run out with his tail between his legs. That's what's going to happen because you're so strong. You, you sound very, very powerful as, as it is. And, and you're, you're talking to the energy right now and you're building it up. Yeah, I, I, I can yeah. feel it from here. Because every, everything we say, everything we say, we're creating. And that's yeah. what the message I'm trying to get through to the across, should I say, to the targeted community is that everything we're thinking is a prayer. And everything is either going to manifest something positive or in a positive vibration, depending on what you're thinking, you know, or, or more of a negative. And we keep thinking, I can't do it. We're never going to free ourselves from this. You know, they're too strong. And we're just going to get more of that, you know, uh, and we're going to create more doubt. We're going to create more negative emotions. And then we're going to create more negative thoughts that are going to tie into them, negative emotions. And the cycle continues. You know, and what we really need to do is take our focus away from how bad it is and how much people haven't listened and then start to create and remember that what we hold in here consistently will mirror and start to show up on the outside. And, if, you know, the other day, for example, we got 100 people in the PACT. PACT is like a big targeted individual um, help group organization. And on right. a conference call, we had 100 people praying on the prayer that I've made, you know, um, and that was powerful. We could feel the power of that. And I've had a lot of people come to me and say, since starting to do this prayer, you know, my whole reality has shifted. You know, I'm not in, I'm not in fear anymore. I have like hope. Um, you know, I know everything's going to be all right. See, and that um, person, that person was brought to you because that person listened to the intuition that that was fed fed to them. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's all. That's absolutely. I just want to say something about trauma real quick because you said yeah. trauma and it's like, wow. Um, as far as the uh, the German trauma with all the Hitler stories and everything else in, in my in my ancestry, uh, trauma only lasts as long as it does until one person says enough. So I'm doing the same thing with the trauma in my life. I'm saying, no, that's it. I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to find out what it was and it's only going to last that long and then one person in the family breaks the cycle and that's it and i'm hoping to be able to do that with uh <clears throat> my ex-family who actually shunned me so they don't speak to me anymore but you know maybe 
before I die, I'll be able to talk to them again. But that's the kind of trauma that I'm trying to get away from myself. And it's not happening. It's not living in this house, you know? There's, there's many modalities in which you can heal trauma. Um, you can do it through something called timeline therapy, um, which is a great technique where you can heal a lot of the trauma ever since you've um, been born and into past lives as well. You can heal trauma through mindfulness and meditation simply by observing all the negative thoughts, emotions, trauma, and just sitting with it when it comes up and moving through the feeling of it. There's many things that we can do to heal trauma, you know, many techniques and modalities, you know, even things like energy healing are very good for releasing trauma, you know, EFT tapping, you know, where you tap the meridian points on the body. There's many, many different modes and, and healing um, modalities that can heal trauma. Hypnosis can help to heal trauma. Um, it's just, I guess it's just finding the right one for the individual and what resonates and um, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you got to find something that, that definitely resonates uh, well, because it's all about that. I'm, I'm glad you guys said that. That's literally how this technology works. Um, uh, the resonating frequencies, but uh, guys, let's take a quick break here because we got to take the top of the hour break. And so we will restart this call uh, right after this. Okay. Please help us be free. <laughs> Thank you for all the fine you have done for us. We come to you with a pure heart to say thank you for America. We want people to remember that freedom comes from you, not government. We want them to remember the brave people that sacrificed it all for us to be a free nation. We want them to remember that if they don't speak up for us, we won't know the freedoms they knew. So please help the grown-ups to see what's at stake for us. Please help guide their minds and hearts to work together to protect our rights, our freedom, and our future. We need them to take a stand for us so they can always speak freely, so they can explore and learn. Hey Lego, we don't know what we want to be yet. But if we're not pretty, we won't be able to choose when we get back. Please help them to stop arguing. Please help everyone to get along and help them work together to keep our nation great. We need your help, God. America needs your help, God. Our future needs your help. Please continue to bless and protect our freedom. Please help me to, to, to be strong and help my parents to be brave. You need trust. Amen. This is the second hour of the show, Retro Hardcore Radio Show. And yes, we still have our guest here, Mark Williams. And so I was told, um, I'm trying to get more of your background here. You're your business owner? Yeah. Uh, do you want to plug yourself, your business, or anything? Or? Do I want to, to? Do I want to? Promote myself as that, did you say? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So I do life coaching. Um, part of that is uh, oh, mindfulness. I do mindfulness. I do Reiki healing. I do NLP. And I also do other energy healing techniques and helping with diet, things like that. 
Um, it's yeah, there's a lot to it really. I, I basically, I, I, for a, since I've been 16, I've been into personal development. So um, this is just an accumulation of all I've learned over the years. And then I help people set goals, change their beliefs, help them deal with trauma, uh, emotional issues. Um, yeah, whatever uh, anyone wants to achieve, you know, that, that's what I help them achieve. So um, there's a lot to it. You know, it's a, a lot of people have come to me with, you know, like illnesses or things like that. Some people come with anxiety, other people come with depression. Um, many things, many other people come with addictions. Um, so it just depends what the individual issue is. Um, yeah. but it, it can all be helped. So, well, something we, we need a miracle. Something I, I hope that you can help with is the actual unification of the TI community. Uh, something that has to be stressed because I mean, I'm glad you've taken over, um, the Target of Visuals UK. Uh, I, mean, I don't know what your relationship is, but uh, what was his name? Gary Owens? Shane. Uh, Shane Owens? Oh, oh, Gary Owens. Sorry. Gary Owens. Gary Owens, right, yeah. Why? What about him? Well, <laughs> I'm just saying you have these, these personalities that just, they're not meant for leadership, and they're just, they're better off maybe in a supporting role or i don't know whatever uh did you, did you mention shane uh you know shane gibbs i oh, know shane gibbs yeah i know shane gibbs we, we did the, the talk we did the the, the protest the target individuals protest in 2000 and okay 18 I think it was. yeah uh, how's his drug addiction going um he sucked up steroids last i remember I, I I don't know about that, but um, I I don't think he's um, um, been very active recently. Um, I've not really seen much from him, so I don't really know what or why is ha going on. But um, I've not really seen much from him, so I, I couldn't really comment. Um, well, we we definitely try our best to help the guy. Um, he uh, he was he was so big on this thing about this uh, targeted visual documentary for Vice uh, tried to warn him that this was going to be a smear campaign and, and you know he's like well, we're going to have a TI a TV network and it's like I we tried giving him um, advice on that stuff as well and you know he kept telling us that we didn't know what the hell we were talking about you know, he's going to be the big star. He's going to do things this way. Um, I was telling tell him, he's going to get used. He's going to get used and abused. And once that actually happened, he did a smear campaign on me. Uh, he did a smear campaign on Anthony and disappeared off the... Yeah. I think it's just because we... <sighs> Again, I got nothing against the guy. I really want to help him. So I, I, I just, and that's what I'm talking about. I want the TI community to come together. Despite all the lies and things like that, because of the big egos out there, you know, he tried his best to discredit us, but when he turned out to be the one discredited, no Ego. TI TV, no TI, uh, um, TV network happened. Uh, Vice used them and, and used uh, several other TIs in that documentary uh, because they didn't know what the hell they were talking about. And it was a total discredit campaign. You know, they, they're far more better target individuals Vice could have uh, interviewed. Myself, Karen Stewart, or, you know, there, there are other names, but they picked the people that had no idea about their targeting and it just made us all look crazy yeah i i, I can't like in terms of that i, I can't i i don't get involved in any of that sort of stuff you know disagreements because um for me it's 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 hard enough going through this that's what's not get it so I, I really i really just try and remain neutral and, and kind of stay out of any um that's what makes you arguments or, or you know right. 
I'm don't you guys, to don't you guys I'm doing, really, you know, um, I mean, don't... basically with regards to what you were saying before, I firmly, firmly, 100% believe that what is happening is that over the years, this technology has become so sophisticated that they, they, they have such an energetic, if we're all energetic beings, we're all spiritual beings and our thoughts are energy. Our emotions are energy. Everything is energy. And what's happened is over the years, the um, these people that are at the top levels who are behind these assaults, they understand about attraction, they understand about manifestation, but they use it for negative purposes. Yes. And so they've, they've known how to create this technology and also create it, I believe. This is my belief. I don't have 100% proof of this, but the occultists who are at the top levels, they understand how to use manifestation for negative purposes. And I believe that they've also used this to create the system and make it in their minds and manifest in their minds so that we cannot fight back. And that, as the public, that puts us in a losing position because the general public does not understand about the law of attraction or the power of prayer. And so what I'm trying to do in the community, and, and this is for me, I think it's going to be the one thing that is really going to break through is educate the public about the law of attraction and about how if, if, if they're creating that energy through their collective intention using the law of attraction to oppress us, the moment that our energy of freedom through the prayer campaign overtakes their energy of oppression and gets more, we will have freedom. But at the moment, it's like that. We're down here struggling to take any, any actions that will get results. They're up there. Uh, and everything they're doing is, is keeping us in that way. So with the prayer campaign, we can finally use thoughts and emotions as well as actions um, to lift that slowly. And that's why I'm trying to make it go viral around the world. So any help that you can give in terms of getting the word out, what I'm trying to get this on is any, um, I've got it on two conference calls, I've got it on PACT and, and Citizens Against Harmful Technology. There's going to be about 100 people on each roughly about approximately 200 people on each a week praying on that we have it growing on twitter so you know it's getting you know it's getting like seven or eight retweets three times a day so it's still in the beginning stages but i know that that can get to the point where we're getting like 200 300 400 people retweeting and these tweet reminders if i just give you a bit of background for the listeners because i'm trying to just give a way of how people can stay in touch with me, how people can follow, what people want to do if they want to join the campaign. So the first thing is that we're praying three times a day. So we're going to be praying at 9 a.m. UK time, 3 p.m. UK time, and 9 p.m. UK time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, like a spreadsheet or something that I can put up as like a photo on like Facebook and Twitter so that people know what that is in their time zone. At the moment, I'm just saying on Twitter, you know, readjust for your time zone. Because I want people praying together at the same times, because there's something very powerful about collective prayer. So if people are praying at the same time, it has more effect on collective intelligence, universal intelligence, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, energy, if people are praying at the same time. I've also created a specific prayer that is very well worded the wording is very specific to cover all of the things and all of the points that we need to do in order to attain our freedom like the media becoming on our side governments acknowledging this you know um tracking frequency police um you know eu getting on board u.s senators all of these groups so it's very specifically worded in a way um in which we're already free because the manifest you've got to write it as if we're already free and it's already happened and so specifically worded that, that it creates that feeling place. When you read it and you pray on it, I've recommended people pray on it as if it's already done. It's already manifested. And that's the way to bring it to you really quick. So it's going to be three times a day. I'm encouraging people to pray on the same prayer because that's going to create more emphasis and more power in that prayer and manifest all of the specific details which are important that I put into the prayer rather than people just praying generally. Or praying that it happens, they they get their own freedom. While people are free okay. in their countries, it's very specifically worded. Okay, we get we get it, we get it. But so, what about action behind the prayer? This is oh, be very yeah. important. 
I, I know you mentioned in the first hour of the show, you know, uh, contacting politicians and things like that. I personally have gone that route. <laughs> what was that fun? Uh, writing a letter to congressman uh, in the state that I was in at the time, and him sending the Secret Service to put me into a, into a nut ward. <laughs> yeah. So, what I think, uh, and you know, what we need to do because there, mental illness, they're going to use a lot of mental illness, mental illness. So, oh, this is a, 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 a wave of mental illness. We need to cite the technology because they've made the patents public knowledge. There's just like 20, 30 different patents on mind control through various ways. And uh, it has to be pointed out this is having an effect on society. But the, the issue is, is that people are not listening because they have such a hold over us that it's it's not even socially acceptable almost for them to do it because they just brush us off as being. So what, what I'm trying to say, I, I've, I've made it very, very clear in my campaigns, for example, that it's not just prayer, it's pr massive prayer and massive action. But the prayer will create the massive action It will create people attracting the right actions that are going to get the right results and the success and it will also create the opportunities to come to you say for example you're praying on this then the right mp you might just walk into like somewhere your local event and an mp will be down there you know just kind of doing his own services finding out what the public need but you will have created that opportunity through the prayer so it's I, I, I always emphasize well, massive action there is, there is and I, 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 I emphasize campaigns, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create the energy behind all of that so that we so that it, it manifests easily and it's not like hitting our heads against the wall continuously because the energy is not there. Their energy of oppression is so powerful. And what happens is TIs get into this mental loop where they believe it's not gonna happen. Loop. And then they're just putting that back out into the collective, and then that happens well, again. Well, what, what, what I'm saying is there needs to be a collective action that follows it, a planned collective action that follows these things, because I, I don't know if you've ever read the NSA Mind Control Psyop Manual. Is that fi uh, Filey? Will, um... Will, Will Filler. Yeah. Okay. I've read. Now, I've read some. Know, of, I've, I've kind of. I've, I gleaned the basics from it. I, you know. Um, I've read. I've kind of got the basics from it. Yeah, because I did read it. Okay. Well, basically, what it says is that you know, the NSA will hear these prayers and they will answer these prayers. Now, if you're only prayer based, these prayers are going to be answered by them, and it's going to have effects that's going to splinter everything that you're doing. So you're going to have to have a plan of action behind the prayers. Oh, yeah, that, that's why I've got nine nine campaigns on the on the thing. But no matter what they no matter what they have got in terms of responding to any prayers, prayer mm -hmm. always works because at the end of the day, we're beings of God. We're always connected to God. We're always part of God, and so that will always manifest on. Because no matter what we do, they're always going to try and counter that. But in my my opinion, and from what I've seen, the prayer has been the only thing in my own personal life and collectively that I've seen that is is and will make a difference. Uh, because in my personal opinion, that it's not like it's we're, we're going to even just praying will will have an effect. It's not like that will have some kind of have some kind of back. Uh, let, let, some, let, some, let me some, add another dimension to that. that kind of backfire, you know. Um. Can I add a little dimension to that? Uh, because I'm hearing you talk about prayer. V's talking about action. I'm going the other way. I'm going polar opposite. And I'm, I'm wondering, uh, you've got to have the shedding of ego first. Then you have to ha understand the change that has to take place. Then you have to want to make the change yourself in order to make the world a better place so you have to really understand what you're praying about and you know the power of prayer is great but people have to really want the change and understand it otherwise it's it's like yeah. you know is not it, doing very well good. when that's people pray, when, when people pray they will actually create the more desire so when what? they pray they will actually the the desire for example when i did the the, the call with 100 people you know with packs and we all prayed 
the next day like, i woke up it was it was like the other side in, of america and it was totally against my time zone and i woke up the next day and i had hardly any sleep but i was like bang i was ready to go and previously you know i'd, I'd been working you know like way too much and I, I was quite i was quite tired you know generally and just the power of that prayer that we did together i woke up and that will increase desire because it's when i'm like not looking after myself and i'm not using this this skill this technique that everyone has as a gift from source that's when i start to struggle you know that's when i start to you know when it when i'm not using my mind and my emotions to support me that's when I, it all starts to go i can find myself going down the narratives a bit again and, and kind of losing my center but when i start bringing that back and I, I start getting really clear about what i want and i think it's very important what you said this is not just about um prayer but this is about massive action too this is about planning and coming together i think these are all very important things and i'm definitely not saying that these things are not important um i do definitely think they do like that's a lot of what my coaching is about it's like setting clear goals defining the goals measurable goals finding the barriers that's why I'm encouraging personal development in the community and I'm putting resources out for the personal development um, in, for personal development in the community, not just the law of attraction, but personal development generally as well. It's because I'm trying to create an empowered community where people understand themselves, understand how their minds work, understand, um, you know, I've put things out like mindfulness and Twitter, for example, and about spirituality where I'm trying to get people um, more aware generally like meditating things like that so it's all really 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 important um but it all starts with awareness mindfulness and then how we're thinking and how we're feeling and then from that we can work together and create massive you know like cohesive plans teamwork and massive action and then we when we're taking that kind of action with that kind of organization and planning and we've got that vision in our mind. We know what we shoot for. We've got clearly defined goals. That's when we'll really start to get the results. Some prayer will go straight to source and some things will happen. But we'll still, most, most of the time, we'll still have to take massive action. But it'll be a lot easier because things will be manifesting in the right way. You know, the universe always knows the quickest, most efficient way to our goal. So if we're creating it in here first and using our emotions, the powerful emotions of love, faith, desire to really amplify what we're attracting the universe will always know the quickest way it will always bring the peak say for example if it's a certain person who can help you most it will bring that person if it's a certain group who can help you most they'll be attracted into your reality so well, and, and uh, speaking of the attracted to the reality but uh, it, it's it's uh, this this is best case scenario what you're talking about you have the target individuals out there i know i counsel TIs every day I've got a, a certain individual who calls me every day, more than you know, more than what else, you know. They're talking about the cycle driving, you know, the voice of skull, you know, constantly being asked questions, constantly being commanded, constantly being insulted, you know, the, the stuff that you know I went through uh, when I was being hit by the stuff. Um, you have these people who cannot rest in one spot for, for a couple seconds because they're being cycle driven these people are itching to do something and to do it now sort of a scenario you know i'm talking to people don't kill anybody don't hurt yourselves don't don't do any of this stuff you gotta find something positive to do with this energy you gotta find something uh, you, you gotta be able to transmute these words that are being said to you you know, take the power away from these words, and we we really need to reach these people specifically. Because I and other targets just have it harder than others. Some people just get the, the computer hacking. Some people just get the gang stalking. But my my real concern are the people that are being psycho driven. Psycho driven? You mean like um, that they're, they're getting it hard? Psychically getting it hard? The, the 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 voice of the skull. They're being psycho yeah. driven. You know, constant I, I, non-stop I get, voices, non-stop insults, non-stop questions, non-stop, yeah. non-stop. It's being, that's psycho, that's psycho driving. Right. Oh, psycho driving. Yeah, yeah, I know you yeah. Um, yeah, I get voice to school. Um, but 
I know like a lot of um, people have been getting a lot of success and, you know, you know, there's something that TIs can do. In fact, praying or just visualizing, you want to call it visualization, same thing. Or affirmation saying like, we are free, we are free, we are free, or reading a script, same thing. Still using your mind to attract, just by a different name. Uh, I know a lot of um, TIs have been really getting a lot of success from using it and that it's praying is actually, or visualizing, you reading a script, is actually easier than taking action. Um, so it's something that everyone can do. And like I say, I emphasize massive action because the last thing I want is people just praying and not thinking they have to take action on the prayer. So I do emphasize that very, very repeatedly. Um, but what, what happens is that when you kind of commune with the creator, with source energy, is that you gain a connection to something greater than yourself and a new strength starts to emerge in you. And even if you don't necessarily believe in God or you know, label it as such, you start to feel there's a greater power than yourself. And so this is why it has, it's, it's been having a very calming effect. And in the early days was one of the few things that really got me through was being able to pray and focus my mind and visualize. Um, because I found when I did that, I was able to really enter that place of power you know, there was there was communing, you know, that God source, that universal intelligence was communing with my own soul and giving me strength. So that's the same thing that meditation does, you know, when people, you know, go within and they go into the source energy. Well, that's the same thing that prayer does. You know, Mark, I, I, I have one one meme that gets me into trouble more than any other one. And it's a picture of the forest. And it says, educate the innocent and terminate the incorrigible. Okay, that's what Mother Nature does. Right. It's no mercy, okay, in Mother, in Mother Nature as we know. And I think that this is a perfect way for spirituality and, and for spirit to protect itself because only the people that want to be woken up will be woken up. The rest will have to make the choice to stay uh, ignorant and stupid and unread and you know whatever that's their choice they're going to make so spirit is only going to work on the people that are of right thinking mind and the rest, we have no responsibility towards them it's none of our business literally so it, it's not you know we have to save the world we have to make people no you can't make a baby wake up by shaking him you know it's like leave him alone because if they're if they're turned on to what you you have to give you, you have to give people they'll be brought to you and that's all you have to concern yourself with that's what i think i i think that the you know what you're saying um is true in terms of that people will only wake up when you know when they're ready to wake up when they want to wake up i do also think that um, at the same time there are many people who are in that position and you know, when these prayers, these visualizations, this energy that we're creating in this community now, when we're all, I think this is something that can bring the whole community together into a collective path moving forward. Um, and I think that many people will be drawn into that path, not just within the community, many people will be waking up and many people will be drawn into their power as a creator, as a co-creator in this universe. But also many people in the truth community, which are now starting to understand about the targeted movement. You know, you see in the last two years, you know, so many truth movement groups getting on getting on board and really supporting the TI movement. So this is this is something that I'm one of the reasons why I'm reaching out into the truth movement to try and get uh, this is my next step really is to, is to ask for interviews in the truth movement with some of the bigger names as well, like um, so that I can. Um, get uh, interviews and make them aware and gain the support of the entire truth movement, you know, regarding mm -hmm. the prayer campaign. Because um, then if we have people who are in the truth movement who are supporting the TI community and also praying on this, there are also many Christians who are in the truth movement, for whatever reason that may be. And these are people who may be more inclined to pray and help. So I'm trying to target this audience as well. I'm also trying to um, reach out. You to said it yourself. Who, you said the word yourself. Intent. That's all it is. It's intent. That's all it is. Yeah, it's intent. And I know that if I create that in my mind, because I've already seen this starting to 
really generate that energy and bring people together. Um, well, and it then, definitely takes dedication. I, I, I've spent years and years trying to expose this. I, I'm not sure if you're aware of my documentaries. Um, but I, I have seven documentaries on this very subject. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll link you uh, after the show. But uh, <laughs> Vice did such a horrendous job with their documentary on target individuals. I mean, like I said, they got the most ignorant and uneducated people about the, the subject, and it just turned to a big smear campaign. I did my documentaries after years of research. We made a poll on uh, Facebook two years ago in the target individual community. Whose documentary did you like better, mine or Vice's? We got 10% for Vice, 90% for, for, for my documentaries. So I think it's very important that we mitigate the damage uh, of these individuals who don't know what the hell they're talking about. I mean, uh, Shane Gibbs got hit with the brown note and, and crapped his bed. But he's telling everybody some Freemason broke into his house and and and, and did number two in his bed, which makes no sense whatsoever. So and so these people that are representing us, that used to represent us, that guy, uh, you know, we need to mitigate this damage. We need to get people educated first and foremost, I think, because if you Prayer is great, but if you don't have a decisive uh, uh, plan of action, and you can't have a decisive plan of action because most people aren't educated about this stuff. Uh, so I, you're you're very educated. I, I'm surprised you knew about the Will Filler, and I you know about a lot of this stuff. And I was so, complimenting him earlier when you weren't there. I was complimenting him on how much he knows and what he he's very what he talks about. about stuff. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it starts with leaders like you. I'm going to say, uh, I'm glad to help you out. And, uh, you know, my resources are your resources. I definitely want, uh, again, we are sponsored by TillBeTalk.com. It's a free speech social network. Okay. I would love it if you brought, you know, come to the network, make yourself a group page, uh, your business page. Okay. You can bring all the target individuals you want, and it's free speech. I, I know of, of all the stuff that we tried posting on Facebook and Twitter that got shadow banned and, and things like that. You're not going to get any shadow banning. When, when, there's just not going to be any of that stuff. There's no algorithm. So you, I, I want to give you that as a forum. And definitely your website. Promote your website there all, all you like as well. But having this online forum would be something great bring everybody from pax uh targeted individual uh, uk everybody you can bring everybody over uh i'll certainly i'll certainly join um uh you know um i'm really i'm running around the clock at the moment in terms of like i'm trying to work i'm trying to keep a business going i'm trying to promote this new website and all my campaigns so it's it's it really is crazy at the moment, you know, and, and still getting hit with all this this crap at the same time. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll join. I'll, I'll check it out. And, and, and there listen. are other targeting organizations I'm connected with. What something I would like to do is to get the heads of each of these organizations together to make sort of a a, a board or some sort of. Uh, information body above all these organizations and let it check uh, it down there, there, there was a group that was started to do that it was um it's like shayla events i think it was what was it survivors I, I, I used alliance to there. survivors alliance or something and i think it was like her freedom for target individuals i think maybe even packs but I, I can't put that on the record it was like four of them joined forces um, so, I mean, that might be a good starting point. 
Um, it's interesting what you were saying before about like educating the public and, um, yes. you know, prayer will allow things to manifest, which will allow education for the public. So as part of the prayers, that natural education process will be manifested, but it all begins in there first. You can even ask specifically for the education of the public or education in a specific area, you know, so um, yeah, I think I, I do agree with what you're saying, but I, what, I, what I would say is that um, the prayer would manifest that as part of what, if you're aiming for the outcome and you're holding the outcome in your mind, then that would naturally manifest in, because that is an essential part, that would na naturally manifest as, as, a, as, a, as a precursor to the outcome as, as, as a result, because that is an integral part. There's no way of getting around education. The public has to be educated and not just the public which is, I think, where a lot of TIs go wrong. The people in power have to be educated. The people in power. And I know it's like beating your head against the wall, but I think that the more that we, we pray and the more that we, we do this and the more that we work together as a team, for example, where you have like a mailing list campaign plus people actually visiting your politician in person, I think that's a good way of kind of getting the information out there, you know, planting that seed but then the people are visiting their local MP, politician, who's part of their constituency, and then that makes it real and personal for them. You know, they can see that there's a, there's, a, there's a real person behind the abuse. It's not just a bunch of crazy people online or people, you know, who are suffering. But then they can just, ah, well, whatever, you know, kind of, I can choose to ignore that because it feels like it's too difficult for me to have to deal with right now. It makes it real to them, and then they think, you know, um, but it's um, the issue. The, the issue is, um, you know, we need to we need to create. We need to we need to create. We need to be on the same page. And if we can have a defined plan across the whole community, um, and then I I'm encouraging people to remember the prayer times, pray in their own time zones, and then that would be the ideal. But also, then if people see the tweets at the certain reminders, I'm asking the public and TIs to use that as a prompt reminder to pray. That's why I would really love it if, if anyone who's watching the show could firstly follow me on Twitter, so it's Mark Williams Life Coaching. Um, I also can be found at targetedsurvivors.com where you feel free to join the forum, which people can discuss the various campaigns that I'm running. Most of them are UK based, more or less, but the prayer campaign, the law of attraction campaign are universal. They're ones that I encourage everyone in the global community the truth community and the larger public to get involved with. I'm also thinking about doing a Help USA campaign where I ask people to um, write into the senators, the US Senate Intelligence Committee and the, um, um, the White House, which will also back up some of the email campaigns as well. And, you know, if, if we can get on, on, on board with, with some of these campaigns to be working on at the same time, the challenge is getting people on the page because a lot of TIs, they're just trying to survive. And so they're not in that sort of, you know, place sometimes, especially if they're getting hit really hard, where they're in that kind of like, I'm in an organized framework, you know, I'm going to write it down, I'm going to get it done. I hate to say that, but sometimes that is the reality. If you're getting hit hard, you're not thinking that kind of logical, progressive way because you're constantly getting drawn in different narratives. So. It's not really, it's not the fault of the TI, but if we can put information out there, personal development information that can empower people on meditation, mindfulness, simple healing techniques, how to attract using your mind, how to use all the kind of goal setting techniques and, and affirmations and visualization techniques, then we can re-empower people to the point where they can get organized and they can join together to create a plan. So it all starts with us individually, you know, um, so the more of this we can do, then the more of us, but I, I really think that if we have one clearly defined goal and people praying on that collectively on the same prayer, the same times, then that is going to create a real effect on, you know, the, on manifestation, on collective intelligence. People can also, um, you know, they can save the prayer to their favorites. You know, they can put it on their desktop. You know, they can set reminders on their online diary systems to pop up. They can set the alarm on their watch. But the ideal situation is people becoming self-responsible, 
you know so they think that oh i know it's 9 a.m i know that's time to pray oh it's, it's coming up to 3 p.m prayer time visualization time script time and that, that's better than just relying on a tweet reminder so what I'd, i would do is i would encourage people to follow me but then become personally self-responsible to do the prayer without having to need a reminder that's really important uh, and then the more people that share the prayer campaign on twitter and then actually pray at them specific times the quicker we will generate this this collective energy which will which will really just it was like riding a wave you know if you've got a wave with more energy you can get higher you can you can create more more um momentum more, yeah more momentum it's the well, same I, I i definitely I, I, again i i agree it, it's definitely a start we need to tack on to that uh i know at the beginning of my targeting and a lot of target individuals discredit me and and they, they try to say that i'm not a target individual how can you be a target individual you're 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 a radio personality you're you're an entrepreneur you're you know your life is not messed up it's just, i've gotten to the point where i am because i was vocal I, yeah, I, I stood in front of my local 7-Eleven with pre-printed out packets this tall, handing it out to people, <laughs> you know, walking by, uh, and talking to each individual about what target individuals are, and how I'm targeted. It, it's going to take people stepping outside of their, their personal shelves. Uh, there you uh, go, uh, there uh, you go. Uh, there you go. It, it, it's the people, people that are going to have to decide. don't want to identify as a target individual in public. We need to break that one. We need to break yeah. that mental prison right there. You know, it's, it's, it's hard, I it's hard enough talking to, so much it, it, that someone offered me a radio show. So I mean, it's it, it's hard enough to get people to to want to make change at the best of times when there's nothing wrong with anything when you're not putting in any problems with you know of life in the equation you know it's 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 a real challenge that we have but it's non-stop yeah it's interesting i i, I do agree with what you're saying that people need to get out to the into the world and create real action in the real world not just online you know we need to be meeting these people face to face like our local mps we need to be reading people from human rights group face to face in the real world because that's the way that we are going to create that impact it's for them to realize this is not just some online conspiracy theory i've seen the pain and the struggle behind these eyes i know it's real that's what's going to make the difference but what, what i would say is that prayer is the means to doing that and personal self-empowerment mindfulness and um, healing techniques releasing trauma learning how to energize themselves through diet and increase their level of energy because that energy you don't have anything and what they're constantly trying to do to TIs is drain them of energy and make them not care. So they have to learn about things like mindfulness, just observing it neutrally, you know, um, gaining a more awareness. Because when you're more aware, you can start to choose the thoughts that you want. You can start to choose the direction you want. And therefore, you can start to manifest using your mind and your emotions. You can start to motivate yourself more because you're aware and you're not listening to their demotivating narratives. So you can counter that. So it's about, it really is a battle of the mind. It all starts here. And I think that um, the more people that can really start to like meditate just on the breath, simple meditation is breathing in and focusing on the sensations going through the nostrils and going out through the nostrils. And that can really help you sense your mind, bring back your focus and start to just observe all of this other nonsense like the mind control and the weapon shots. You can just start to observe it more neutrally. And this was something that really, really helped me a lot. I read a book called The Power of Now, and that book became like a bit of a Bible to me. I kept reading it over and over about how to live in the present moment and how to you know, move through my thoughts and emotions and not try and run away from it. And when I started doing that, a magical thing really started to happen was that all of a sudden I wasn't trying to escape it. I wasn't trying to escape the targeting. I was moving through some of the worst symptoms and just staying with it. And I was like, move with it, move with it, mm -hmm. feel it. And when you start to move into your fear, start to move into the sensations, all of the things that are going on, it loses its power, it loses its fear, because whatever you face, 
you can no longer be afraid of anymore. It's only the unknown that we're afraid of. It's only when we try and run away and separate our things, ourselves from anything, whether it be directed energy, weapon, mind control, fear. When we try and run away and separate ourselves from it, the fear gets worse and it perpetuates because it's it's creating that I don't want this anymore. I'm afraid of this, and it's creating that that. Uh, it, feeds our, it feeds us off of it. It yeah. feeds off it, yeah. And then you think you because you're saying you're running away from it and you're not facing it, and moving through it. The only way is through through the emotions, people don't, through the mind. People don't realize that how much uh, how true that moment is in Lord of the Rings when uh, when Gollum is looking at himself in the water and he says, "Go away." He says, "I want you to go away, you know, and never come back." I'll never forget that. Never come back, you know. And all of a sudden, it's gone. You know, it's it's like you know, uh, the the Native Americans always said to be careful north of the neck because that's where the problems start. You know, um, yeah. The Native Americans also say that uh, that uh, the word is a prayer that you can cast. You know, I'll say in virtual commas. Oh yeah spells by what you're saying so if you say something about someone say for example someone's got like a new business and then all of a sudden you start talking to your friend about how that business is never going to make it off the ground well you've just effectively cast a spell i'm not on about anything to do with like voodoo or witchcraft they're literally no, but the that's, that they're trying to say is that our words something else the elite know how to you know, use can, can disadvantage them and stop them from achieving because you're putting that energy on them that negativity on them that prayer on them so we have to be very careful about what we say because about people in our lives because that's firstly creating bad karma but it's also putting that energy onto them so you know we have we have to be very careful because everything we're saying is creating a cause and effect you know our mind is energy our thoughts are energy we're energetic beings this whole universe is energy Quantum physicists have proved that everything is like a quantum soup, is is connected energy, and so you know we're not separated in any way. So whatever we're thinking in here is creating that cause and effect. Everything is starting and originating from here, and then it's from that that we can create the the the, the teamwork, the plans, the goals, the vision moving forward, the massive action, the, the action in the real world. You know the, the practical action. So, you know, um, it's all interrelated. Everything yeah, we're doing. I, I really would like for people, for Tari individual, something that helped me. Because you, you got to have so many anchors, so many principles. Yeah, you got to, it's not run. You got to, <sighs> Americans have been so brainwashed into comfort you know you gotta be uncomfortable you gotta be in pain you gotta be harassed you gotta that it, it stirs such a fire up in me you know vengeance is all i can think about getting up every day you know i'm getting these people i'm getting them i'm no i'm on your trail like a hellhound i'm on you people but at the same time that wasn't enough. You gotta find things that inspire you as well. You gotta be inspired. You, you know, whether it's music or or something you love. Music was a big thing for me. Um, and so these are proponents that you you got to you have you have to have. Um, you know, and these things would feed something like prayer as well. And vice versa. It, it's it's got to be a constant chain of, of, of things. And once you get that unbreakable chain and you keep rolling, I think that would do us uh, a, a great service. Do yourself a great service. I had to stop meditating outside, facing the sun, sitting on the deck, facing the sun, uh, not in, you know, in, in the warmer. Uh, in the uh, cooler times, like early morning or, you know, late afternoon. And I had to stop doing that because, you know, you hear people driving by going, what the hell is that guy doing all, all the time? Because it's so, it, I had people actually get upset with me for doing that. You know, what are you trying to prove? You're different. What are you trying to do? You know, you think you're better than everybody. Unbelievable, right? 
just because I'm outside praying, facing the sun with my eyes closed. So uh, you create that energy by yourself and people that, you know, one person stopped the car and said, excuse me, and I had to wake up and look at her and she said, I should try that too. Thank you so much. And she drove away, right? So you're going to wake up people that are ready to be woken up. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to be able to convert anybody on that. The thing, the thing, the thing with that is that you know all of them people who complained, you know you're you're going to get more people generally. I would say, uh, naysaying you for doing that, but the amount of people who won't say anything who will have been inspired by that mm -hmm. and will have seen something and thought that man looks at peace and that awakens something in them, mm -hmm. in them will be greater than the amount of people who um, will have seen that and thought, I'm going to show this guy that he's not all that. Who the hell does he think he is? Who does he think he is? You know, <laughs> that they will be greater, the people you've actually affected from seeing you doing that and then waking mm -hmm. them, 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 them. So I would, I would like keep doing that. You know, I would think like, blow them, I'm going to do this anyway. Because like, you know, who cares what they think? You know, some random people passing by, you know, I would just... But it comes like, to a point when, when you have to make sure that you know, and V and I talked about this before I I, I became his co-host. It's like you have to you have to make sure that you don't go with ego. Ego is so important; it's number one. People don't realize that. If you go to if you if your intent there's that word if your intent is ego, nothing is going to work. Well, and it, it, I, I really believe that. Yeah. No, sorry. Go ahead. No, that, I'm, I'm actually done. I, oh, I think it's. Oh, I just want to, to, to back up what you're saying because mm. something I want the target individual community to stop doing is stop calling people that you don't like or someone who just doesn't agree with something you said a perk. Absolutely stop, agree. Stop Absolutely that. agree with that. I, and, and people are going to like, V, don't be a hypocrite. You call people perks. I've investigated skills and resources where I proved the people that were attacking me were perks. But people these days, like, you know, uh, oh, 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 this person didn't return my message. It must be a perk. Or this person, you know, put a frying face on my, on, on my, uh, my, my post. You know, it's, oh, that's a perk. You know, just because just someone isn't exactly like you or is agreeing with you or resonating with you, don't call them perks. Absolutely. Yeah. And you guys know the one, you guys know about the one about the finger? My grandmother always said, when you point the finger at somebody, you got three of them pointed at you. That's so karma. That's you karma. shouldn't even be doing that in the first place. Thing out you. There, when you start to get into that mindset and you're putting that out there, trust me, that is coming back towards you. That's why I try and stay out of anything because I don't want my energy invested in any of that nonsense. And to be honest, right, we have there has to be a compassionate approach to this because if you think about it, that is exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to create that paranoid mindset. They're trying to get create that anxiety about everyone else being a perp and create that disharming, that, that discord and people falling out. I've seen it so, so much and I've experienced it with the people I've been working with most closely, where they've tried to create a rift in us via them doing it on me and them, sometimes seemingly even at the same time, where they're coordinating at the same time um, to create a falling out. And I can feel this narrative. I can feel them leading me down to like an argument or like trying to say something that's gonna ruffle their feathers or something that's wrong or like trying to make me not even understand the situation because they're bombarding so many frequencies into my head. Like, I, you know, literally it gets to the point where I've had it where my mind cannot even think anymore. I can't even think straight because the brain is, is just at a base level is receiving that much interference that physiologically it's not even functioning as a brain anymore. I've had it that bad, you know, when I've been communicating with people. And um, yeah, that was the one thing when I originally, when I started in the community, that was the one thing which, which made me doubt. Do I want to join the community and get to know people in the community? Because I saw that going on and I thought, you know, I understood why it was going on. And I felt like, you know, I, I felt really bad for people. And I, I felt, you know, this is terrible. This is going on. But at the same time, it felt like you, I'm someone that tries to keep my life very simple. And I don't want to get involved in like negative drama and things like that. 
and and this back and forth thing and, and that admittedly did in the early days kind of put me off thinking do i want to get involved in this you know what i mean is this something where but then i did find like a lot of people that i, I became really good friends with and that um i find the simplest way is that if people are do, you know i have had a few people like you know come at me and make false, false accusations and find the quickest way is just to block straight away you know like no negativity i don't need i don't need any extra negativity in my life you know my life is is challenging enough as it is trying to juggle all these things that i'm trying to do and work as a ti a lot of ti's don't even work you know so I'm, I'm trying to like do this campaign i'm trying to work at the same time what, what, what about this what about this to do it more often that that should that should help uh, i'll give you one example i'm turning on cnn or i'm sorry fox news and the reason why i have fox is because I love to see what they're trying to brainwash us with because you, you believe the opposite, basically. It's really important to, to watch that for me. I usually watch it with the volume off anyway. But here, what do they have? Johnny Depp's trial. Okay, that's a prime example of drama, you know? And they're going, oh, I, I, I sat there and I watched it the, the, you know, the, uh, before lunch and it was so impassionate, it was amazing, you know? And it's, who cares, you know? This is what people... You know, like they're literally brainwashing people here. This is what we want you to work with right now. Here, this is what we want you to do now. And they're treating us like idiots, you know? Yeah. And that's that's who we become if we don't smarten up and wake up and make the world a better place and do the work that you have to do right here. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. All starts with us. Yeah. I think, I think like, it's really interesting what you're saying because, you know, like, it, it really occurred to me, the madness of the world, when I saw that these articles saying... Like latest celebrity step, steps out in a skimpy bikini down at the beach in in um, the south of England or something. I was thinking like, who cares about these like like these these celebrities and like you know if they they took out a day at the beach and they were wearing something that was like hot or attractive, you know, and and they're, they're doing this to like sell newspapers and it really made me think like the world has got all the priorities wrong. We'll talk about some nonsense little event like that, something that's completely insignificant. And yet these abuses are going on and they're not being reported currently they will but they're not currently well they are being reported in terms of vanna syndrome but we need to create that link between them just pretend saying that it's diplomats to them saying this is global this is innocent civilians globally that's the link that we're trying to bridge and it's just it just amazes me every time i see these nonsensical articles about nothing you know about some really superficial value or superficial thing and yet people are eating it up and, and are interested in the reporting on it. And it's just not important. It's not important at all. Yeah, there's more important things, <laughs> especially, I mean, my, my main goal right now, in all honesty, is to reach as many people to stop the killings. The, these target individuals are being turned into killers. These, these shooters because they don't know what's going on with themselves you know they they don't know who the people are that's intervening in their life they don't know all they can do is just throw their anger out at somebody and make society pay especially because no one's paying attention to their pain nobody is paying attention to their persecution you know, Myron May, uh, it, it, I, I wish people would go and watch those videos. They're still up on YouTube. I'm surprised the government's let those videos stay up. Yeah, I was you shocked. Know? I was shocked. We got to stop the bloodshed. Absolutely. It's a slow genocide. That's what it is. And it's also a eugenics program because it's stopping yes. people from reproducing. Most TIs, you know, are finding it difficult to even go out and, and work, never mind find a partner and and create offspring and that's one of the things that um, out of all of this that i personally find quite resentful is i always wanted that family and now i, fi I find myself doing this and, and you know I, I want to do this but of course every single ti would love to be out there living their life would love to be starting a family and focusing on these things you know focus on the the, the fact the fun and the passion and the enjoyment in life and you know um that's what life is about you know is is, is growing spiritually and is about Really following our passion, following our bliss, following what we love to do and enjoy. Well, it. the only problem with that 
is that when you start to realize that you do have knowledge, then you're going, well, uh, that's my responsibility now to do something with it or else I'm no better than anybody else. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you know all this stuff and you don't do anything, then you're no better. You're no better than, than the people creating it. So I really, that's why I love doing these shows because it's, you know, this, we're not making money on this. We're not, there's no, the only benefit fit work is to wake people up absolutely i know what you mean and and yeah like you say with knowledge definitely comes responsibility and the way i see it is that you know we need to collectively go within and grow spiritually and grow in terms of personal development um developing qualities these kind of things in 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 in, in you know going within to improve ourselves but then we also need to spread awareness and knowledge. And I think we have a personal responsibility for our collective society. That each person has a responsibility towards the collective and towards humanity to at least try and understand the world around them and make the world a better place on the external, not just growing within. Because a lot of people say that, you know, that if we all like awaken and we all grow spiritual and we all kind of go towards enlightenment, that the whole world will change and you know there is a lot of power in that and i would say that's number one but i think it's also important for people to take a responsibility to improve the world around them and i think that uh, you know people either set their you know go into one camp they go with a right i'm going to go within and i'm going to ignore all of the pain in the world all of the problems in humanity or they go in the other camp where they come into the truth movement and you know you know they completely forget about you know improving themselves and growing themselves and so they can become quite unbalanced people in the truth community simply because they're not balancing that with you know staying peaceful staying centered growing themselves you know learning to improve themselves so yeah, the idea absolutely right my friend I, I i you know what i hate to interrupt you but we have actually run out of time for this hour my man, you have uh, reinvigorated me. I, I know uh, you're definitely going to inspire some other people. Uh, we're going to get your reach out there. I'm going to work with you. Stay on the phone call, okay? Stay on, stay on the call. But I've got to end the show for right now. Guys, this has been another episode of the Red Pill Hardcore Radio Show. Uh, this is Mark Williams out of the UK here with us. Uh, remember, though. In the land of Savannah's name of third eye is king, so please educate yourselves. That is good. That is good. Tune in next time to Red Pill Hardcore. It's real. Take a Red Pill.